done along the bottom. Now I'm going to uh, do my straight line along the top of the wall. Now this is a stucco ceiling, um, so really no difference um, in, in the process or technique, other than it's a bit easier, I find, to even get a line across the uh, stuccoed ceiling. So you just want to just get up to that stucco with the tapered end of your brush. If you've watched other videos of mine, um, without it being a stucco ceiling, I usually flip the brush around because it helps me to get an even truer straight line. But for a stucco ceiling, it's it's actually quite simple. The The big thing is you don't want to get it too heavy and uh, uh, get it too close to the stucco because it will absorb the paint. And it might, um, yeah, just not look as straight. But as you can see here, it's actually not that hard. Um, it's easier to have a or to do the cutting in when the ceiling is stuccoed right to the corner. When it's a flat ceiling, it's you have to be a bit more cautious and it's a little trickier to freehand a straight line, but with these ceilings, it's actually quite easy. And like I said, you just follow the same technique. You want to make sure you feather the paint down. That just helps it to uh, to blend. You never want to leave it too too heavy in any one spot. So I'm just letting the the tip of that tapered end of the the brush just to run along there, and it's you can see it's quite easy to get a nice line. Now you don't want to rush, you want to just take your time and do a do a good job. I find if you rush or try to go too quick, that's when uh, something can happen. A, a spill or who knows what could happen. There, looks good. I'll just continue the rest of the, the way. This is an accent wall. This wall is going to stay the same color. And I need to get a nice straight line down this edge. So I find that the left side of accent walls, I can do freehand quite, quite good. The other side, I find it's a little more difficult just with the angle of how I have to hold my brush. But here, I find that it's not so bad to freehand. I'm just going around this curtain rod. But yeah, if you just turn the, the brush on its edge. It actually isn't that bad. To get a nice straight line. On the other side though, I, I typically will use tape. Because like I said, it's a little trickier. So what I like to do, get a bit on your brush. And then you want to just make sure that the majority of the heavy paint is removed from the brush. Then I just take it on its edge and just let it follow that corner.
then I turn it back around and just follow down that line that I've created freehand. So I'm not really putting a lot of pressure. I'm letting the brush do the work. Also, um, this will go a lot easier if you have a good brush. So for this one, I'm going to use some tape. Now, this corner, like some of the others in this place, a little wonky. So it's always uh, good. Uh, if you're not comfortable freehanding, to uh, to use some tape. Now I'm just going to keep it away from that corner just a little bit, and you'll see that it's going to create a nice straight line. Something that isn't. Uh, that your eye's not going to go to, anyway. Then uh, I like to use something hard on the bottom of my knife that it has this hard metal edge. So I just take that down just to make sure that there's no spots that are sticking up. You could also use a hard piece of plastic, credit card or a debit card or something. Just something that's going to make sure that that's nice and tight. You don't want any any areas that are away from the from the wall because then the uh, the paint will get through those cracks. And it won't look as nice. You're not pressing too hard with the with uh, whatever you're using, but that'll just seal it up just a lot better. And uh, typically, I use a narrower tape, but this one was all I had, so that's what I'm using today. But yeah, you could get away with just using inch wide tape. Another suggestion I would have is to make sure you use a good tape. Don't buy the, the cheap stuff. Um, they always have a few different options. I would say you don't have to go with the most expensive if you don't want to, like a frog tape or something. Um, this would be like a in-between tape. But wherever you can ask them their opinion on what the best tape is. All right, so now I'm ready to apply the paint. So you want to get a healthy amount on your brush. Get it right into that corner. Make sure you are doing your feathering away.
I like to remove the tape right away. There's no reason to leave it on. Um, now, if you're wondering about the second coat, um, I can demonstrate how I do that as well. But for the second coat, because you have a nice straight line, you can uh, freehand up to it and it'll make it a little bit easier to follow uh, that you already have your line. And you just have to get close to it. So I stay away maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. And that way my second coat will cover nicely and still maintain a nice straight line. There. Now even though the corner is a, a little off, it is, uh, it's nice and straight and uh, um, aesthetically it looks nice and straight. If you were to follow the contour of the corner, then it would look a little bit off, but um, using the tape, getting a, a nice straight line, and now I have something that I can follow when I do my second coat freehand. So next is time to roll the wall, get the first coat rolled, and then give it time to, uh, to dry. I like to have a 10 mil roller sleeve. Um, and if you've watched other videos, then you'll know I just like to go top to bottom. You want nice, even amount distributed over the surface. You don't want it too heavy in any spots. You don't put a lot of pressure when you're rolling. You just let the roller do the work. Make sure that you purchase a good roller as well. So. Alright, so like I said, the uh, second coat I will freehand. I just have to get close to my line for it to cover good and still have that nice crisp looking straight line. But having that line with the tape, it does give you just a nice guide to follow. When you put your second coat on. Second coat, you're putting on pretty much the same amount as the first coat. And it'll just uh, cover everything that wasn't totally looking covered with your first coat. Typically all paints only require two coats, but you will run into some colors that may require a third, typically uh, darker colors. Following the same principle of feathering the, the paint away from the corner. Right. 
And now I'm just going to do along the bottom and the top. And then one last roll and we're good. So it really doesn't take too long to do an accent wall. It does really look nice. It really enhances the aesthetics of your your room. Another thing with accent walls, you want to just always make sure that they are the that it is on the wall. That would be the focal point of the room. So the wall that would be where you would look at the most. 